session six today in Romans chapter six. We're going to be looking at this great chapter as Paul is continuing this walk through the understanding and teaching of the gospel. And I think what is going on as he gets to this point is he's talked so much about God's grace and no matter how much sin you have committed, God's grace is sufficient, that God's grace pours out in your life. And so then the question becomes, well, if that's what happens, then maybe we ought to just do more sin. The more sin we do, then the more grace we'll get, right? So Paul addresses that. He says, what should we say then? Should we keep on sinning, continue to sin so that grace may multiply? Well, absolutely not. This is a hard word and absolutely, I mean, he is being extremely strong here. Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? There's no way we've died to sin. How can we continue to live in it? That, that there must be, there should be, there will be a change in your life when you get saved, when Christ forgives you of your sin. And so he goes on to say, are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? And almost a sense here of saying, you need to understand what happened when you got saved. You need to understand the, the events spiritually that occurred in your heart, in your life when you got saved. And so here he uses this word baptize, but he's not speaking about um, the act of baptism. He is speaking about what actually occurs. And, and as we take it now, we look at the act of baptism as a picture of what actually occurs. So what has actually happened? When you're baptized into Christ Jesus, you're baptized into his death. Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. Often when I would baptize people, I would say, buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. It's, it comes from this passage of Romans chapter 6, 3 and 4. And that's this picture of what happens that when you get saved, you are baptized into Christ, baptized into his death. Now here, that word baptism becomes important, doesn't it? And what we believe about that word baptism becomes important. As Baptists, we believe that baptism means to be immersed, right? So we immerse people when we baptize them. Other groups will sprinkle on their head. Well, now just think about the difference in what happens and what that word means based on what happens when we do it, right? When, when you get saved, are you immersed into Christ or do you just kind of get a sprinkling of Christ? Well, I think we know what happens, right? You get immersed into Christ. You get completely uh, um, under underwater in Christ, right? Your identity becomes immersed into the identity of Christ. So this full immersion is a picture of what happens spiritually when you get saved. Baptism comes afterwards, but it's a picture of what happens spiritually, that when you get saved, you are immersed into Christ. You are as if you are buried with him, right? In baptism, that that, that baptism is, is completely gone away. That person that you were dies there, right? In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, so this, this burial, this death that happens results in a resurrection, right? Just as Christ was buried, we are resurrected. So when... When you're buried, that, that body, that who we were, the old nature, is buried. And th there is a significance to that, right? We're separated from, from the power of sin. It doesn't mean that, that sin is extinct in our life anymore, but the power over us is no longer there. That, that we're free from the hold of sin doesn't mean we, we, don't, keep, we don't sin, <coughs> but we don't have to sin. There's not a hold of sin on our life, right? We're delivered from the penalty of sin. There's no guilt. Um, we're delivered on the cross. Um, that's why we focus on the cross so much, because what happens there in that death is that sin loses its hold on our life, right? That, that we look at his death as our own death. We identify with Christ in his death, that, that, that we're dead to these pursuits and the aims of an ungodly life, those things no longer control our being. And we are raised, right, just as Christ is raised. We're now raised to a new life. And there is significance in this life. <coughs> Excuse me. This life is, is new, okay? This is important. It is a new life. It is not a, um, a remodeled life. 
It's a new life, entirely new, entirely different, not a reformed life, not the renewal of a previous life. It is a new life. God gives you a brand new life. You think about these words of new creation, of transformation, of being born again. It's a new life. It's not a, a remaking. It's not fix up the old, put a little you know, coat of paint on here, patch a couple of holes, and, and it'll be good. No, it's brand new. Brand new. Not the, the, the previous has been dead, is dead and buried. Don't pull it out. Don't be guilted into repeating that. You've got a brand new life, right? And the joy of this is that God has made everything new. Everything is is brand new. We don't continue to sin. It's the old life. We've got a new life now. Uh, we're joined with Christ in his resurrection. We have new feelings, new actions, new goals, new values, new thoughts, new motives, new hopes, new passions. Everything is new, right? You want to see the world change? Boy, the people in the world find Christ and get a new life, the world will change, right? Baptism is the picture of that reality. He says, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. That We are no longer ruled over by death. That it has no more hold on our life. We are completely free from it. And baptism is the picture of that. When we go under, that old life dies. When we come up, it's a brand new life. We have a brand new existence with God, and we need to grab hold of that because we have died with Christ, right? And we have risen with Christ. We believe that we also live with him because we know that Christ raised from the dead. It was not a resuscitation. It was a re-resurrection. It was a resurrection. He will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. It no longer rules over us. We completely identify with Christ, with his death, burial, and resurrection. When we are baptized, we identify with what happened there. So you too, consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Think about, consider this. This is Allow this to sink in. Allow this to become a very real part of your existence. That what it means to be dead to sin and alive to Christ, that sin doesn't have a hold, that Christ now uh, has created within us a brand new life. We are a new creation. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that all, all the old has passed away, that behold, everything is new. We are brand new, that everything is brand new for us. This is a brand new existence. This is what God brings to us. This is, this is what God does. So, Go back to the beginning of the chapter. Should we just keep on sinning so that grace may abound? Well, what? No. Why would you do that? Sin doesn't have a hold on you. It, your, your existence is no longer ruled by sin or defined by sin. You are now free from that. You don't have to fall in that anymore to gain the grace. In fact, we stand in the midst of God's grace as forgiven, declared righteous followers of him. So live that. Be alive to God in Christ. That's the life he calls us to live. Hey, I hope that's helped as we've uh, done this study in Romans chapter 6. Thanks for teaching. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, the videos are, are helpful to you. Share them with somebody. Let them know about them. Uh, subscribe down there. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe so you get them every Monday. You'll get a notification when they come up. All right? Thanks. We'll see you next time.